celebrating 13 years of possibility. Pilot Flying J and Halloran Hilton Hill present Anything is Possible. Today's guest, Cardinal Justin Regali, Part 1. Welcome to another edition of Anything is Possible. These are great stories about great people whose lives are proof that anything is possible. But your life is proof that anything is possible. And I hope as you watch these uh, broadcasts, whether you watch on television or you're watching on a computer or maybe even on your smartphone, the one big takeaway for you is that your life represents a possibility and you should maximize that. And we hope to shine a spotlight on possibility with the lives of great people that sit in this chair. And today we have the, the great privilege of having with us today His Eminence. Cardinal Justin Regali, thank you for being here today. Oh, you're welcome. It's a pleasure to come back and be with you. Right before we went on the air, you have with you a New Testament. Uh, yes. In Latin. First of all, I looked at it and I thought, well, let me give this back to <laughs> the Cardinal. You were you were reading a scripture. Um, what were you reading? Well, I actually what I was reading was because of what you just said. You had mentioned that to me before about anything is possible. You know, Jesus says in the Gospel of St. Mark, uh, Jesus was asked the question, who can be saved? And he says, uh, he says, with people, he says, it is this particular thing, salvation, is impossible, but not with God. So anyway, what I was looking at is the fact that, uh, you know, in regard to the theme of the program that uh, certainly we know that people should be pushed to give their all to have success. But there's still the measure that can only be done with God, and that's salvation. Right. We know that there's salvation in the name of Jesus. And that, uh, so Jesus has mentioned that. I, I was thinking of this in terms, in terms of your program. With, with God, all things yeah. are possible. And I picked this up because this is the smallest uh, Bible. It's not the complete Bible. It's just the New Testament and the Psalms. But uh, since I didn't have an English one that was that small to put in my pocket this morning, you grabbed that one. I grabbed this one. And who gave you that? Actually, this was, this goes back years and years ago, probably 45 years ago. The, this came from Pope Paul. Uh, not directly, but it was his secretary that gave, gave me that because the Pope, the Pope was uh, promoting the, the use of the, the scriptures, the New Testament, the Psalms. And so he had this, and he was giving this out in the Vatican years and years ago, and I was working there. So that's, wow. that's how I got that book. Well, let's, let's explore the possibility of uh, your life. Sure. Your life begins in Los Angeles, California. Yeah, South yeah. Los Angeles. How many years ago is that? It's, uh, it's just one month short of 80 years. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm, Take, turning, I'm turning 80. Congratulations, you don't look a day over 30. Well, I'm in the presence of the bishop so, or the cardinal, so let me not prevaricate. Uh, but let me, let me just say this. I'm wondering what it's like for you as a young man growing up in South LA all those years ago. Yeah. And if you, when you saw the possibility of service, Christian service, well, uh, I think I was very fortunate because uh, I had excellent parents with wonderful principles and, you know, Christian people and uh, had brothers and sisters that w was helpful. So I had a lot, of, a lot of help, you know, I wasn't left on my own to figure right. it all Were out. Were you raised Catholic? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And um, so then I, I, I went to the uh, local Catholic schools and uh, you know, thing, things worked worked out. Had uh, had a good education, and um, you know, and ev everything was very very calm. I was never under pressure, to, you know, to do anything. But I was convinced that what I was being taught about about Jesus, about the, the faith, about you believed. I I, I believed, and that, uh, and so it was just a question of delving into it more and more at each passing year of my life until and, and, I finally got to be a priest. 
Tell me about your parents. Well, my parents were uh, my parents were both born in Massachusetts, and my father had been in the uh, First World War. Uh, a, 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 yeah, the first the First World War, and uh, then when he came home, he and my mother got 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 married in Boston, and after that they they left because my father had been hurt in in the war right and uh, he, he went out to california and his father was and some brothers were out there already and uh, so what that, did he do uh, in, in california i he worked uh, with his father they were they were in in real estate at least his 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 father my grandfather but you have to keep in mind now if my that was a long time ago because if my father were alive today, he would be, uh, what is it, 15 plus 13, 28, he would be 128 years old. <laughs> 128. So that, was a, that was a while back. Yeah, so he was born in 1887, 1887. They were, they were married in 1921, so that, that goes. That's a, that's a while back. Yeah. Yeah. My guest today is Cardinal Justin Regali. Uh, we'll be back with more in a moment. You're watching Anything is Possible. Possibility powered by Pilot Flying J, Covenant Health, Home Federal, and the Knoxville News Sentinel. Coming up. I, I serve four popes in, in uh, Rome, and I've uh, worked under two more, <laughs> under two more that... Uh, that were elected. Actually, I was involved in the election. So it's six popes altogether. Welcome back to Anything is Possible. These are great stories about great people whose lives prove that anything is possible. My guest is His Eminence Cardinal Justin Regali. Thank you for being here today. Once again. During the break, we were talking about grace and how your life developed uh, as a young man in Los Angeles toward the priesthood. And I was talking about kind of the gravitational force of grace. You said that the reason you ended up on this on this path is because of grace. There was something drawing you. Yeah. Did you feel the magnetic force of God's grace pulling you to this? Yes, uh, certainly I did. It, obviously, as a young person, you don't full you don't experience the whole force. I mean, you know, you don't. But but you know, uh, you realize that. Uh, you know the good ideas that you have, the, the good uh, ambitions that you have. That all all of these are because God is God is speaking to you in your heart, and so I think what you said is 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 accurate. It's it's good. Yeah. Becoming a priest, did you feel like, in dedicating your life to that, that you were giving up anything? Well, you know, you at a, at a young age, you never appreciate absolutely fully everything but you're it's quite realistic and you have a general idea which over the years will become clearer and you will have more opportunities to ratify your 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 uh, decision and to confirm your intention and to see both the extent of your giving up and at the same time the extent of what is given to you as fulfillment in mm -hmm. a spiritual sense. So, but all of this does take time. You know, it takes time to develop. But yes, you, you certainly, when you begin the seminary and when you end, it's a totally different thing because you have a much fuller sense and a much more mature sense. And, uh, and that's the way it's meant to be. And, uh, you know, the also, in the course of life, you, at different moments, you, you see the extent of what's being asked of you, but you also see the extent of what you're supposed to do. For example, one thing uh, in the priesthood, uh, we can't emphasize enough the beauty of, of the family. We can't emphasize enough the beauty of the vocation uh, of Christian married love. You know, husband and wife, and the children, and the value of the of, of the family, but also for for the priest, he has a specific vocation by reason of celibacy. It's freely gi given, 
and it involves renunciation, yes, and uh, sometimes you you feel it more than than, than other times. But uh, in the course of time, you also realize what a privilege you've been given to have this the spiritual relationship with people. You know, mm. the uh, and uh, the bishop, for example, uh, the diocese. He's the father of the whole community and has this wonderful relationship, and. He's been given the privilege to love people with a very special type of love, because each love, is married love, priestly love, they're different, but they're, they're, they're all love. Right. And so he's been given this specific part of his vocation to love people in the name of Jesus, to bring the love of Jesus. And you know, when you're in the hospital and you see these sick people and you go to visit them, this is part of your spiritual. Uh, paternity, and it's worth it. It's worth it. Mm, that's, I mean, that's, I mean, that's a beautiful part of your journey is that you do come to a point where you go, this is not a sacrifice. This is service, and that service is worth it. Right? it it's, it's worth it. Uh, it. It's worth it. The, the sacrificial element still remains, but the point is, it, you're given, in your vocation, the fulfillment, and the fulfillment is. Jesus himself said, I have not come to be served, but to serve, huh? Right. And, and Jesus fulfilled his, the reason he came on earth was, was to serve and also to teach us to serve. Wow, he did a great job of that. He did a great job. So how old were you when you became a priest? I was 26. So you're 26 years old. Um, now you have served four popes, correct? Uh, I served four popes in in uh, Rome, and I've uh, worked under two more, <laughs> under two more that, uh, that were elected. Actually, that I was involved in the election. That, so it's six popes altogether. But I. So I, I, what I'm trying to imagine is 26 year old uh, that has been drawn by grace to uh, the office of priest, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to imagine if that 26 year old even imagines that one day you will work directly with popes? Never, never. It, it never occurred to me. It never occurred to me. I, I tell people I, I was minding my own business. And, and all, all of a sudden, in Los Angeles, where I was ordained a priest, they, they said, go to Rome. And so I went to Rome for future studies. And I was minding my own business. And all of a sudden, they, they said, well, uh, you know, to come and serve in the in the Vatican. So I did that, and and then that involves be, being sent right after that to the island of Madagascar, and then it, where I was trying to mind my own business. And then they said, "Come back to Rome." So I, I, I did. You just were, as you have said, minding your own business. You has anyone ever told you? what they saw in you in terms of possibility that made them say, this guy's the guy. Has anybody ever said to you, we saw these qualities or we saw this possibility? Uh, you weren't the only 26 year old um, priest. Yeah. priest. The uh, uh, yes and no is the answer to that question. The, uh, when I was assigned to Rome uh, after my ordination. Cardinal McIntyre, who was the bishop that ordained me, he was the Archbishop of Los Angeles in those years, uh, in assigning me to, to go to Rome and study, he, uh, I mean, he said uh, uh, they thought I would do a good job. And then later on, after three years in Rome, when I finished my my studies in the university, my postgraduate studies. Then he said they were asking for a priest. This was this was right during Vatican II, or right before uh, Vatican II. That um, he he said they they wanted some English-speaking people to work in the Vatican. And uh, he said to me, we thought uh, we thought that you would do well. And uh, we recommended you. We recommended you. However, you're you're not forced to do it. You, we 
we only we'd like for you to do. We, we think you're capable of doing it, and um, so they're asking, well, "Do you say? Do you say yes?" And so I said yes. You know what's what's interesting about that, and we'll talk more about this in just a moment, is that the possibility of your life seems to be a gracious unfolding. Like you show up where God wants you to be, you offer yourself fully to that moment and that service, and then there's an unfolding. But you know, this is really all, just as you describe it, it's really something that happens in so many people's lives. You know, sometimes it's more obvious, uh, uh, in like more places or something like that. But every life is so precious. And, uh, and God loves everyone, you know. And he gives, he's with everyone in the development, may not be so spectacular in one person or in another. But uh, it's, it's, very, it's very, very beautiful. And uh, when my mother died, she had a, a little prayer card on her dresser, which got lost. And, and then I finally found the text. But it was something that inspired me. It said, it was, I, I don't know who wrote this anonymous prayer, but it says, never to look beyond me, out of my little sphere. If I could fill another, God wouldn't keep me here. So it's rather encouraging. Wow. You know? It's rather encouraging. <laughs> that, that is, that's amazing. My, my guest is uh, Cardinal Justin Regali. We'll be back with more Anything is Possible in just a moment. Coming up. And God is offering to everyone so much because he's offering himself. And so in that sense, everything is possible. This week, our Home Federal Bank Community Spotlight is on Volunteer Ministry Center. Did you know that Volunteer Ministry Center works to prevent and end homelessness for people in Knox County? They offer supportive housing for the disabled, indigent dental care. To learn more and see how you can get involved, visit vmcinc.org. Welcome back to Anything is Possible. My guest is His Eminence, uh, Cardinal Justin Regali. Thank you for being here today. Once again. So we were talking about this unfolding of your life. Uh, you were a priest. You get called to study in the Vatican. And, and that is kind of the beginning of, of your journey. And I'm watching this, I call it this gracious unfolding. And I love what you said right before the break that though you have been uniquely called, every one of us, that was your point, was that all, all of us have that calling to step into a moment and realize that every one of our lives is this gracious unfolding and that there is the magnetic force of grace drawing us to something better and more beautiful. Yeah. And God is offering to everyone so much because he's offering himself. And so in that sense, everything is possible. Right. Yeah. That is the possibility. Yes. All right, so you so you go to the Vatican to study that. I go to Rome to, to study Rome. the university oh. <laughs> there. So and tell me about your just your education. Well, the uh, uh, when I get to Rome, I have a course of three years in uh, in canon law, the law of the church. Right. That becomes your specialty, by the way, right? Yes, that okay. that becomes my specialty. I get a doctorate in in there from the Gregorian University in Rome. And then at the end of those three years, I was planning to go back to Los Angeles. Uh, matter of fact, I had already sent my, my trunks back to uh, Los Angeles. They got lost on the way, but, <laughs> but anyway, no, I was planning to go back. And then I received a, a request to uh, come and uh, go into the Pontifical Ecclesiastical Academy. That's a, an academy, a school, an institution for young priests who are asked to serve the Vatican from all over the world, right. from all over the world. And uh, so I consulted the Archbishop and, he, and at that time he said, yes, uh, yes, uh, I was the one that recommended you. We think you'll do well. I said, okay, okay that's what you want. So then I went to this uh, school for another two years. And in those years we studied material relating to the the operation of the Holy See of the Vatican. And it also it included uh, languages. For example, took, uh, took uh, Spanish, which I had studied before, took French, uh, took um, the, uh, we also had a little bit 
of German there, etc. And at the same time, since I already had my doctorate, they asked me during those two years of further study if I would work in the morning in the Vatican. So I, I was free because the other students, they had to proceed on uh, postgraduate work, but mine was complete. So I began working in the Vatican in the English language department of the Pope's Secretariat. So I did that for two years, and that was a great initiation into the whole world of uh, working yeah, there. Exactly. And then after, at the end of these two years of work in the Vatican and of study in the afternoon in the Pontifical Ecclesiastical Academy, then they sent me on my first assignment because it was foreseen that the people that do this course, they'll be sent out different places in the world. And uh, I was, I had this um, particular role that usually they keep sending you from one country to another, but I went only to Madagascar. Uh, and uh, I was there for th three and a half years, three years, five months, and it was a great experience uh, off the coast of Africa there and uh, the island, fourth largest island in the world, which is also, um, about twice the size of Italy. People don't realize how big it is. And uh, so anyway, I, I was there for th three and a half years and they called me back to Rome after I'd been there for five years. They called me back and I spent another 25. So it was... It, another 25 years in Rome? Yeah. Wow. So that, that was five and 25. It was 30 altogether. That's 30 years. All right. So uh, let's take a, a break here. Yeah. What we're going to do is on next week's broadcast, we'll pick up because I want to hear the rest of this great story of possibility. So I hope you'll tune in next week. This is Anything is Possible. I'm Haller and Hilton Hill. I'll see you next time.